having reached the outer limits of what we could achieve on our tours, including band travel by train and drastically reducing any aviation, we commissioned the Universal Roadmap to try and make a wider contribution to the decarbonisation of live music. We decided to work with the Tyndall Centre for Climate Change Research, a specialist body that brings together scientists, engineers, economists and social scientists to accelerate society's transition to a sustainable low-carbon future and avert climate catastrophe. So to start our work on the roadmap, we looked first at Massive Attack's own tour plans and we ran various scenarios to look at how we could get emissions down uh, within those plans. But then we wanted to look more at how we could create a roadmap for the sector. And it was really important to us that we built on the best practice and the analysis that's already there, the literature that's already there talking about how to do this or demonstrating how elements of it have been done. But then we also wanted to test that and to, to find out um, what, what people across the sector were doing. So we did a series of interviews with you know, agents with promoters, with ticket providers, that kind of thing. And then once we had a draft of the roadmap, we took that to stakeholders for feedback um, so that we, could, that we could iterate and build on the advice and experience that they have. We've now published the roadmap and shared it as an open resource with our industry. In the roadmap, we look at three areas. So we look at travel, so that's about moving people and equipment, venues, so that's about energy consumption there, and audience travel. So if we think about key findings across those three areas, for the travel part, that is about trying to reduce the need for travel in the first place. So right from the inception of a tour, thinking about the design of that show um, so that it is as, as low carbon as possible. Now that means routing it um, as efficiently as possible, but also moving as, as little stuff and as few people around as you can. It's also then about trying to shift the mode of that. So planning so that you can take the train if that is an option rather than flying and certainly arranging it so that you don't rely upon private jets um, to get between venues and, and sort of at the end say well there was nothing we could do but that it's about building it in right from the beginning to say all these low carbon things can be done because we planned for it on venues, um, it's about adopting energy efficiency, so whether that's in the equipment or the building itself, um, and also looking at things like plug and play opportunities, but then also looking at how that energy is provided, so on-site generation or really high quality renewable energy tariffs. And then in the third part, the audience travel, it's about making sure that active travel and public transport are the best and easiest ways to get to a show and that they're the most fun and that we look in time once that is all sorted out and that is that is the case, that those are the best options, that we disincentivise the private car option for, for going to, to gigs. Now as we move forward, the challenge is for us to activate that roadmap. We're identifying industrial partners who can quickly but meaningfully help us reduce greenhouse gas emissions on all future tours. Well, I think most of us are aware that events require huge amounts of power. It's just the way things are now, and that applies to all sorts of events that we might go to. And if you're doing that in a way, and more often than not this is the case, where the grid isn't available, then you've got to bring in diesel generators. That's what stood us in great stead for 100 years, and it's the way it's been done. And whilst it's been a good servant, you know, where we didn't know quite what the impact was, now we really know about the impact, and we know that's a hugely destructive thing that we're doing. And the part we can play is uh, really that we're, we're involved in all of those three big sectors, energy, transport and food. When it comes to energy, it's super simple. It's never been easier for a gig, a venue of any size to sign up to green electricity through the grid. Uh, transport is, is super important that we encourage public transport or electric vehicles. And in food, the easiest of all and perhaps the biggest difference we can make is have a vegan menu. There are no panaceas and no quick fixes that don't involve greenwash or offset schemes and not everything can be done as quickly as we would like. But as more technologies become available, we're fusing these elements with our own choices as a band to make sure tour plans are consistent with Paris 1.5 climate targets. I think we all want the same thing, but we have different roles to play. For us as a manufacturer, it's all about providing those solutions that can take us towards decarbonization. It's not about the distant future. It's really about here and now. There are solutions today that, that can do the job. You don't have to wait till tomorrow, to the future, to decarbonize your transport. You can start already today. If we're to properly address the scale of the challenge around global warming, the cultural sector, like every sector, needs more from government in terms of planning and investment in renewable solutions. 
Yeah, it is a challenge. Let's not pretend it isn't. We're building these uh, with our partner, Siemens Energy, and they've been built in Newcastle in a factory there, which is, is brilliant. Uh, and we're building as many of them as we can. We're building them by the dozen. The trouble is we need to be building them by the hundreds and the thousands. And also we need to be building them at a lower price. But that does not mean we can't act now. Live music events have incredible reach and everybody involved in putting them together has a responsibility to act. From established bands touring across continents to the multinational promoters with real decision-making power. Here we are on the cusp of COP26. What should major touring operations do? Something. Do something. Come on guys. Energy, transport, food. It's never been easier, never been more obvious, never been more urgent. It's fantastic to see Massive Attack collaborating with Tyndall Centre scientists to create this roadmap. The challenge now is to activate that work. We know that businesses of all scales need to create emissions reduction plans and act on them that are compatible with the Paris target of staying below 1.5 degrees. So we'd appeal to all promoters, agents, festivals and of course artists to draw on this roadmap as an open resource and to sign up now to the race to zero. But we'll need to make sacrifices. The science is emphatic and the stakes could not be any higher. We want our sector to reassemble and play its part in the greatest challenge of our times, so that the artists starting out on their journeys now have an industry to inherit in the future. Every industry and every nation must change course. The planet and its species cannot afford any further delay or accommodate false solutions. Our addiction to fossil fuels is pushing humanity to the brink. We are digging our own graves.